Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial here on related angles as part of the trigonometric functions unit. In this video, we're going to apply our understanding of trigonometry to find angles that share the same trigonometric ratio here. So a couple examples I'm going to go through. First one here, given that the sine of some angle A is 3 over 5, and we know that that angle lies in the first quadrant. Remember when we look at our unit circle, we rotate a terminal arm, we, we can rotate that angle through different quadrants. Our goal here is to determine the exact values for the cos of A and tan of A. So we don't know much about this angle A, but we do know one thing. We know it lies in the first quadrant. So if I draw my terminal arm, that's this red line here. You can just picture it kind of rotating and stopping in this position here. That's the angle A I'm referring to. Now I know a couple things about this angle. I know that if I'm taking the sine of that angle and I have three over five for my sine ratio, I know that the opposite side has to be three and the hypotenuse should be five. That's what this ratio tells me. The sine of A is three over five. However, in order to write cos and tan of that angle A, I need the adjacent side. Okay, and you can try to write the cos or tan of this angle right now. Remember cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. We're missing the adjacent side, so that's why we need to find that adjacent side. And we do that by using Pythagorean theorem. Remember, this is a right triangle, therefore we can use Pythagorean theorem to determine the, the adjacent side of this triangle. Okay, so I've just kind of done that quickly for you here. You can see that we've determined the adjacent side of this triangle is four. So from here, we can very easily state the cos and tan of that angle A. Just by using our knowledge of trigonometry, we can say adjacent over hypotenuse would be 4 over 5, and the opposite over the adjacent would be 3 over 4. Okay, just a follow-up, part B here says, what is the value of angle A? We want to actually determine the measure of angle A. And we can do that just by looking at our sine ratio. You remember, you can take the sine inverse of both sides, and you'll see that you end up with 36.87 degrees. So, we, so now that we've determined this unknown angle, we can start talking about this concept of related angles. Now, as it turns out, if I were to rotate this terminal arm counterclockwise around this unit circle, you can imagine the unit circle here, you'd see that there exists another angle such that the sine of that angle is identical to the sine of our original angle. Now, our goal here is to determine and draw that angle that happens to have the same sine value. Now, it turns out the solution lies in this cast rule that I've talked about previously. You can use the cast rule to determine that we know the sine ratio will also be a positive value in the second quadrant. So I know if I were to rotate my terminal arm a little further and end up in the second quadrant, I know that the sine of my ratio will be exactly the same. It'll be a positive value, just like over here. So I've got a positive sine value here, positive sine value here. We know that these two angles here are identical, and we can determine the measurement of this big angle. This is the angle I'm referring to. This angle, whatever it happens to be, will have the same sine value as our original 36.87 degree angle. And you can picture, we know that a straight line adds up to 180 degrees. So if I simply subtract out the 36.87, that should tell me the value of that angle. So it ends up being 143.13. Now if you calculate the sine of this angle, you should see that you end up with over 5. What other angle between 0 and 360 degrees has the same cosine value? So our goal here is to use the cast rule again to determine another angle that happens to have the same value for cos. Now using the cast rule, we know since our cos of A is a positive number, 4 over 5 is a positive number, our angle has to lie in either the first quadrant where all are positive, it can't lie in the second or the third quadrant because only sine and tan are positive here. That tells us that we have to rotate all the way around our unit circle until we land in the C quadrant. Now if you think about this as a full circle, right? I've got a full unit circle here of 360 degrees. I want to subtract out this 36.87 degree angle and I want to end up with this black angle, this big almost completely 360 degree angle but not quite. So when I subtract that out, you'll see that I end up with a 323.13 degree angle. So the two angles are related in that they share the same cos value. Okay, another follow-up, what other angle between 0 and 360 degrees has the same tangent value? Well, we know the tan of A is 3 over 4. This is a positive number, so we cannot have an angle in the S quadrant. Likewise, we can't have an angle in the C quadrant. If we rotate our terminal arm just a little bit further though, you'll see that we end up in the third quadrant, the tan quadrant, where tan is positive. 
and we've got a related angle here. You can see there's sort of that X symmetry here that these two angles would be equal. I don't want this angle though, I want the entire angle. I want this black angle that I've rotated all the way through to get into the tan quadrant. And we know that this straight line is 180 degrees. If we go 180 degrees, we wanna go just a little bit further. We wanna go 36.87 degrees more so that we get to this terminal arm position. So in this case, what we're going to do is add 180 and 36.87. That's gonna give us this rotation to this position right here. So that's 216.87 degrees. So these two angles would be related. They have the same tan value. So just a little summary of what you just saw here. For any given sine, cos, or tan ratio, there exists two angles between zero and 360 with the same ratio. And we saw that here. You can't get more than two because there's no way that you can have a positive or a negative angle in, in quadrants where they don't exist. Okay, and we can determine that where those angles exist using the cast rule.